ओम श्री साई राम ऑफरिंग आर हम्बल प्रणाम एट भगवान डिवाइन लोटस फीट रेस्पेक्टेड एल्डर्स ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वी वेलकम यू टू द वन थर्टी एट एडिशन ऑफ समर्पण ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस ओकेशन ऑफ ओनम I take this opportunity to wish all of them seated here a very happy and blessed onam on this festival day as swami has reminded all of us uh, we celebrate emperor bali's dedication and spirit of sacrifice um who comes from the great lineage of pralada his grandfather and virochana his father who were uh, the chosen devotees of the lord emperor bali as we all know surrendered to the uh, completely surrendered to swami and has uh, truly taught us the meaning of samarpan so it is befitting that we are having samarpan on this day on this auspicious occasion by swami's immense grace we are fortunate to have brother harish krishnan balasubramanian as our speaker for this session he has been blessed with great dearness and nearness to swami i'll just give a brief introduction of a brother harish brother harish is an alumnus of uh, shri satyasai institute of higher learning he was born and brought up in chennai and um, he was introduced to bhagwan in the form of a photograph in fact he was telling me that one of the photographs which was where swami was doing the abhyasta was the one where he was introduced at the tender age of 7 He joined Swami's college at Prashanti Nilayam in the year 2003 for his MBA program. After completion of his MBA, he was handpicked by Swami to work in the Sri Satyasai Sadhana Trust at Prashanti Nilayam, where he worked till 2012. His mother resides in Prashanti Nilayam and serves in the primary school in Puttaparthi. Brother Harish was blessed by Bhagwan with a rare opportunity to provide personal assistance to Swami. since the year 2005 among the chosen few brother harish was selected by swami to be a member of his entourage to kodaikanal mumbai harshi and chennai during swami's trips on the professional front brother harish works with walmart as a senior manager in the global audit analytics division since may 2019 He currently resides in Bangalore with his family uh, his wife sister Sai Ranjini who also is an alumnus of the institute his son Sarvajit who is a Balvika student and his daughter Kasturi uh, who sings very well in fact in the words of one of his classmates brother Harish is a balanced humorous curious and down to earth person always staying in the present and living to the fullest at a personal level both of us were part of the same samiti in bangalore which is the electronic city samiti um, where in fact brother harish and his family are actively involved in the satyasai seva organization besides that he is part of the vidyuleka team the alumni magazine of the shri satyasai educational institutions with uh, without further ado i would now like to invite brother harish to share his memorable experiences with bhagwan and he'll be speaking on the topic chiseling as a happening brother harish om shri sai ram i offer myself at bhagwan's lotus feet thank you respected most beloved bhagwan respected elders dear brothers and sisters a sairam to one and all and uh, onam asham sakal whatever i was planning to talk about onam was already stolen by the brother who introduced me <laughs> parikshit so thank you for that brother but uh, i mean it cannot be a more apt day than onam for me to have this wonderful opportunity to talk in dharam kshetra in fact uh, the very first interaction that bhagwan had uh, with me in regards to uh, you know as a personal service or as a attendant to him was to enquire about the kerala youth who had landed in uh, prashanti nilayam in april for the uh, vishu celebrations 
in fact uh, swami at that time mentioned to me that val kerala var vandar entha mandi undaro chudu kerala people have come go find out how many people have come so at that point in time i had no understanding of uh, the chain of command the line by which you know you get the instructions or anything like that so swami has told then immediately went to uh, where the, the orange cars i remember they were wearing that time they were all sitting i went there and asked one of this uh, people there like uh, uh, how many of you are there and someone was answering that time uh, professor mukundan who was the state president of kerala he immediately came there running and like the hallmark of greatness they say is humility and that is something which you will see constantly in prashanthanilam people who have been serving at very high positions and those who have been dedicated to swami will talk to a student who joined the institute two years back you know and uh, uh, who probably has absolutely no knowledge of sai literature or no knowledge of uh, the amount of work which the sai organization does with the same respect by which they would speak to swami because they do not see the distinction because when you are going and speaking to the devotees they do not see you as the person who is standing in front of them but as the messenger who has come from swami so that humility was a huge lesson to me and of course they had also immediately uh, uh, given all the information which i had the opportunity to communicate back to swami as some of you might have heard in some of my earlier talks that was the time when swami had just started talking to me and uh, being someone from chennai i wanted to use that opportunity that uh, swami was very in a very rare instance of swami being in prashant nilayam for tamil new year's day and vishu which were like subsequent days so we wanted to put up a drama on uh, uh, on some literature of the in from tamil which some of us who were staying back in hostel after our vacation were well versed with so i took the opportunity to write the script and you know we wanted to take it to bhagwan fortunately had the wisdom that time to go and ask a teacher like is this something which we can do can we go and approach swami and ask because when swami starts talking to you like uh, professor bagya says we first become chatterjees then we become banerjees we start uh, talking to everyone that you know now you know i am an important person swami is talking to me and i am i am this form boy i'll carry this banner saying that you know uh, if anything has to go let it go through me i can i can talk anything to swami so very easy for us to fall into that trap and so that is when i also kind of fell into this trap and thought you know this is the time for me to uh, initiate this uh, drama performance which our our batch can do our batch was blessed with multiple opportunities to perform skits uh you know dance programs speeches and all those things during our two years we were little spoiled to uh, to say it lightly then i took this to one of the teachers who were uh, in charge for us in the hostel and then we went to them and told that sir this is something which we are thinking of this is something we can do and uh, being a little over smart that i was i already went and spoke to the kerala and tamil nadu state presidents at that time and they all said no, no if the students program is there then definitely swami will enjoy we should have that right so they immediately said yes so once i went to uh, the teacher then the teacher kind of explained to me uh, someone very wet behind the ears that these people have not practiced for one or two days you are today writing a script and thinking about putting up a drama in 3 days these people have been practicing for months for this one opportunity to come in front of swami and perform do you think it is correct for us to go and take to swami a different proposal for a program and that is when kind of it sunk in that proximity does not mean dearness proximity does not mean understanding proximity does not imply 
that it is an opportunity for you to do what you want uh those videos kind of kindled a lot of memories and sorry for digressing a little but yes in many ways uh kerala and onam have been integral to lot of the chiseling which has happened in my life in bhagwan's fold so chiseling has a happening what does this topic even imply what does this even mean very often we get caught in this loop of cause and effect swami is talking to that boy because he has been doing so and so swami is not talking to that person because i heard he was involved in such and such right very easily we try to analyze the actions of bhagwan who is beyond the comprehension of our the limited company of our senses swami says you are your eyes cannot perceive beyond a wavelength your ears cannot perceive beyond a frequency and yet with this limited company you think that you can comprehend the vastness of bhagwan's creation of his grace and his intent how foolish can we be if we think that we can analyze and understand what leads to bhagwan's actions the more i started understanding no i shouldn't say understanding realizing or being aware of the fact that unless we separate ourselves from what is happening to us we can neither witness the happening nor can we realize the chiseling we all say why do you go to bhagwan he says we go to bhagwan because we want to get transformed i remember uh, i was doing my engineering and uh, i had this opportunity to do mba and prashant nilayam and i was planning to go there so i had a friend who uh, studied with me in school as well as in engineering and i knew him for many years even lived in the same neighborhood so he asked me what is it what is your plan what are you going to do i know you wrote uh, cat mat rat sat and all those entrance examinations for mba tell me where are you going to go i said uh, no i am going to prashant nilayam i am going to go to shri satyasai institute of higher learning i am going to do my mba there He was extremely surprised. Then he asked, "Why? What? What is the reason for you to go there?" So I said, "No, I am going there for my own transformation." Again, uh, a textbook answer, right? When you don't know what you want to say, you you say what the literature says. You say what everybody else says. Then his immediate question was, "No, but you are not a bad boy, <laughs> right?" So the the idea then was like. this puttaparthi is like a military school a person who is completely indisciplined would go there to gain discipline so he was like you are not a, a, a wayward person you are no you don't need to go there and get transformed what is it that you want to get transformed for i did not have an answer that time i just smiled and uh, he continued doing what we were doing but the interesting thing which happened was that there was transformation we often think that transformation implies bad to good and more importantly looking bad to looking good 
what i realized was all my life all my youth i had been obsessed with the need to look good with the need to be someone who does not get any remarks need to be someone who you know gets good name for the family gets good name for parents all those kind of things but internally i would feel extremely impure the reason i would feel impure again which is something uh, realization which came many years later was because i was not addressing what was happening within me as something as a something whole right we are always trying to have a narration around it we are always trying to have a story around it and anything which looks good is something which you project outside anything which does not look good is something which you hide inside and more and more when this we do this it becomes more and more toxic i did realize that i was developing a lot of self pity self hate and all those kind of negative uh, scenarios going on so bhagwan always says reflection reaction resound yad bhavam tad bhavati what is your thought that is how the world reflects back to you so when we face the world by looking good but having all these feelings of self self inadequacy the world will reflect that back to you and that is what happened to me i was low on confidence at one side i was getting scores i was getting marks and those things were going on but i did not have the confidence to face the world i was feeling extremely inadequate but here is the interesting part swami says that what you give to the world is what the world reflects back to you but he does not say what we give to bhagwan how does that come back to us so when we are in the presence of bhagwan there is no world to reflect back our own feelings of self inadequacy instead we get to be the ones who reflect what bhagwan's opinion of us are because when swami sees us he sees us as the reflection of his own purity we remember with great amusement when bhagwan would tell stories about the students he would tell about the idealness of the student life about how all the students would be absolute perfections how everyone would get up get up on time for suprabhatam how everybody would be uh, in fact swami would say that the students would soak the rice from previous day and the next day they will mix some majjiga or uh, buttermilk with that and that is what they eat for breakfast because it's very healthy the previous night at 12 o'clock we would have uh, taken rice from hostel mixed it with pickle and eaten had a proper rajasik dinner but bhagwan saw us from his eyes bhagwan saw us from the way he knew we could be bhagwan saw in us the potential so all these places where bhagwan chose to give himself to give his love unconditionally and to walk amidst us be it prashanti nilayam be it dharmakshetra be it brindavan be it sundaram be it sai shruti be it, be it shivam in any of these holy places which bhagwan 
has breathed and lived in it contains within it his own reflection reaction and resound in the years that had i had the immense opportunity to be in his presence we got to witness bhagwan as a personality he was as human as human can be and every now and then provide the flicker of his divinity to kind of keep us grounded in his human existence there is nothing which any of us have faced that he has not faced all the difficulties all the jubilations nothing did he prevent himself from facing and that is why when he says my life is my message we can take it with pure authenticity because bhagwan experienced every emotion that a human being is expected to experience and i got to got an absolute beautiful privilege to witness every one of those emotions they say that swami is a possessive god god to witness is envy as well god to witness is but there is one emotion of his that we never witnessed we have never seen swami afraid we have never seen fear cross his eyes because swami says the opposite of love is not hate the opposite of love is fear how can fear exist when love itself is walking on two feet the reason why i mention that every place of his suffused with his reflection reaction and resound is that i got the taste of this during my the first stint in prashant nilayam after i got my admission into mba i entered prashant the portals of prashant nilayam swami was still in brindavan at that point in time and uh, we were uh, left to face the sun the humidity and the mosquitoes it is a very interesting experience being in prashant nilayam before swami makes his appearance and yet despite swami at, i mean at that point it was it was very easy for us to kind of distinguish between the physical and the ethereal so physically bhagwan was not in prashant nilayam and i as a student or as a devotee had not really experienced much time with him as a personality as brother introduced swami had come to my life in the form of a photograph when i was 7 years old and that is the photo thank you brother for displaying in the background so that is a picture which used to be in our altar but the only darshan we have had of swami was the dur darshan so swami would come to sundaram or abitsbury in chennai and uh, he would be in the balcony and we would not even know what is the timing of darshan or anything else like that so we would just go there on a random time when my father was free and uh, a couple of times when we went there swami was giving darshan from the balcony i remember my father lifting me on his shoulders so that i could have his darshan from long distance and that was the proximity which we had so this was the first time in prashant nilayam and me as i was growing up in my childhood i was a pretty sickly child i used to fall sick very often uh and so i used to be extremely protected i was also the first grandchild 
of uh, my maternal family and uh, also pretty close to everyone in my paternal family and i used to be extremely protected so with protection you get security but you also have fear and one of the fears which i had was of stray dogs i used to be extremely afraid of stray dogs i used to be afraid of monkeys when in puttaparthi there was no shortage of dogs or monkeys both with and without tails so during my very first walk from hostel to mandir we were walking across uh the ishwarama school and that entire school that area was there were some 10 12 monkeys sitting there and to my surprise i was feeling no fear and then i crossed and then there were stray dogs everywhere and that fear disappeared as well and to this day that fear has not returned so that for me was the first miracle that i experienced and it was experienced in absentia and that is when i understood the value of stala prabhavam the the value of being in a place which was chosen by the avatar a place which has witnessed his presence it has its own magic it has its own miracle it has its own uh, glory because it has been the recipient of the reflection reaction and resound of bhagwan himself as i narrate many of these experiences being in the financial capital of india i'm reminded of one interesting experience which we had so there were five of us that time around swami and swami used to call us pancha pandavas i have the privilege today of being one of three in this hall who were part of the group so hold me true here there was this one particular doctor who was extremely devoted in a child like manner swami and every now and then he would be leaping with one letter in his hand so swami would joke with him and pick up that letter one day he came inside uh, interview room we were all sitting there and one thing that we have witnessed is in our time with bhagwan is the predominant time that swami spends throughout the day is with letters he is constantly reading letters whether he is sitting in the interview room whether he is the dining table wherever he is there is always a bunch of letters next to him and that is what he is constantly consuming on this particular day swami took this letter and there was a mischievous glint in his eyes so we knew something was coming so we had as our practice our head down and uh, had the opportunity to pass seva and we would not look up unless swami was talking to us and swami suddenly told us and said ikkada choodu then swami was holding up a check so we have heard so many stories of you know, swami taking up a check and saying and this did not come in the correct means and tearing it up so we thought we are going to experience something like this but in this case swami just said see inta pedda check ichadu see what a big check he gave then we were silent we don't know how to respond to this then he said munane inka idu inka oka pedda check ichadu even some days back he gave a big amount we were like we never had an experience having such kind of conversation with swami what is swami trying to say then uh, we were we didn't know what to respond and then swami said nenu tank lo pettunnanu wallet tap open chesi istunnaru i am putting in the tank they are opening the tap and giving is that not true for every one of the actions that we do we 
think that we are standing here as speakers giving talk who is going to come and listen to someone if he did not have the association of the lord himself if bhagwan had not poured all that love and all that experiences in the tank what is going to come out of the tap we think we are great you know great performers great singers great musicians but where does all that come if the talent was not given by him if the opportunity was not provided by him if the chiseling had not happened through him i remember one beautiful incident there is an excellent flutist in prashanti nilayam who still serves in the ashram and before bhajans he had the opportunity to play flute it was on on that particular day there was there was something in the air and the sound of that melody was extremely beautiful and everybody was enthralled by it and that was during the gap between the alap and the bhajan so at the end of the performance the singer started singing the bhajan so after that bhajan was over very uncharacteristically swami started talking in the bhajan hall typically when bhajan starts there is no conversations it goes on all the way till aarti and during aarti swami uh, accepts the aarti and walks out of the bhajan hall that used to be if any conversation would happen it would happen before the bhajan starts but this day suddenly swami started talking and then everybody felt silent what is it that swami is talking then swami said vaadu chudu enta baaga vasichadu everybody was like yes swami is an extremely beautiful uh, playing and it, before i continue i should mention this it is to the credit of the devotee or the student if swami chooses to make that person as an example of a story swami would not do that to a new student or someone who has just come to his fold if swami uses you in a story that is an indication that he understands or he acknowledges that you are in tune with his thought right so then swami was talking to uh, was talking about this boy and he said it was such a beautiful performance the melody was so beautiful we were all enthralled then but there was a we all could sense that the but was coming then swami said kani would we all be listening to him if it was not between bhajans if it was not between the namasmarana for which we are all here we knew swami was going to go somewhere here before we go to that that was a huge lesson for me because i was i had opportunity because i was sitting closer to swami to look at that student when swami was you know lifting him up to the sky and then dropping him down i could see the equanimity in his face i could see that he was unaffected by the fact that swami was praising him nor was he affected by the fact that he was dropping him down because not only was he playing an instrument but he had subjected himself to be an instrument to be played by him
Swami then used this instrument to tell the story that no matter how beautiful is the secular education that we are getting in Prashant and Aliyam, what is the use of that if it is not interspersed between the Atmic education for which we are actually here? Every now and then, Swami would use the opportunity to drive a point home in a manner by which it sticks to us that years later, when many other things have been forgotten, these lessons do not easily fade away. Back during my MBA days, We had the opportunity to put up a program for the MBA day, which is an opportunity where only the MBA boys, the first and second year boys would have a chance to put up a program and our batch especially was extremely talented. We had uh, all kinds of uh, Atiratis and Maharatis as we call it, who were Great in public speaking, in uh, dramatics, in music and what not. So this being a smaller group and the MBA of our batch was one of the first batches which was predominantly external. I think we had about 45 to 50 percent of the students were first time students who had studied or bachelors outside and had come to MBA for, to Prashantinelli for the first time. So this was an opportunity that we all got to be in his presence and to put up some performance in front of him. Fortunately, the few students who were there from before were able to guide us that the focus here is not our performance. The focus here is to see how much time we can get of Swami. See how much we can... Uh, you know, make Swami spend time with us as exclusively as possible. Everyone wants inclusivity as long as we are not the exclusive ones to receive. But when we are the ones who are receiving His grace, we want it to be exclusive. And that is the beauty of the avatar that he made each and every one of us feel exclusive. Each and every one of us are unique, just like each and like each, just like just everybody else. So during that MBA day, we were all prepared with our program and I had the opportunity to be a trade union leader. So I was probably the first person in the history of Prashanti Nilayam to look at Swami in the face and shout strike. So I was seat seated there before the program in the bhajan hall and the makeup boys were there. Typically in any uh, Prashanti Nilayam drama, there would, be a, there would be a contemporary base and there would be a historic uh, anecdote which would... Uh, involve a mythological or historical character who would have a life lesson from Swami's Chinakatas. So the makeup person was busy with uh, all those uh, uh, historical characters and then I remember going to that person and asking, do I need to put any makeup? You know, I've got a lot of uh, dialogues. So he said, no, what is your character? I said, trade union leader. He said, you look perfect as it is, go and sit. So we were seated there in the bhajan hall and Bhagwan came to the bhajan hall before the program. He was interacting with some of the students who were there and uh, remember Professor Sudhir Bhaskar sir was there in front, uh, who has, as our champion. He was trying the best, his best to make sure that Swami spends as much time as possible with uh, with all of us. 
and then uh, swami said if there are doubts unte adagandi if you have any doubts you ask veteran devotees of bhagwan and veteran students know that this is the time to silence your mind but we were all new we were all uh, fresh in you know, between our years and we thought this is what a great opportunity this is and we all started raising our hands initially we were all kind of reluctant so sudhir baskar sir in this uh, asked us few questions to kind of get the conversation moving and then slowly we all took courage and started raising our hands so my opportunity came i raised my hand and then swami looked at me and asked what is your question then i said swami how do i control moods when i am in a good mood i am very productive i am able to get lot of things done but when i am not in a good mood i am not able to get anything done i am just sitting there doing nothing how can i control that so i expected a 10 point code of conduct now to say okay this is step 1 step 2 step 3 but instead bhagwan touched on the most fundamental piece of it all he questioned my very identity he asked okay, you are being affected by mood okay who are you i said swami i am your student he said no no who are you then uh, i said uh, uh, swami uh, i am i think i think I, the response i gave was that swami tells you are not one but three so i said swami i am the one who i really am or something like that and swami was not satisfied with that answer he kind of pestered a little bit more and said you know tell me who are you and then i said uh, swami you only then swami said appadi illam solla kudadu in tamil you should not tell like that because it was not coming out of authenticity it was coming out of textbook then uh, then i said swami the atman swami then swami responded you find out that then you will not be affected by these moods i remember uh, a story of ramana maharishi Who, uh, which I got to read many, many years later, where a, a disciple asked Ramana, "Sir, so many people come here with different ailments, and they have different levels of understanding. To everyone, you keep saying, uh, 'Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? How will people understand this? Why can't you give them something easier to digest?" And it was written that Maharishi responds. saying that when i have the medicine which can cure all diseases why would i go go around prescribing more lesser more lesser effective medicines to everyone so in this case when irrespective of what we think of ourselves what we believe our own potential is bhagwan seeing his reflection in us provides that response which he knows will lead to the happening of the chiseling in the long run let me narrate a few other instances of this chiseling which i was subject to so this was one of those days where uh, the pancha pandavas were sitting inside the interview room and uh, swami was in a very uh, humorous and uh, happy mood and he started uh, asking us 
what our name was and what the meaning of our name was so uh, before that he was like uh, he kind of asked all of us your pancha pandavas so dharmajudu evaru who is the dharmaja here and none of there was no confusion we all looked at nitin acharya brother and said swami he is our dharmaja he is our leader and then swami looked at him and said uh, okay, what is your name he said uh, swami nitin and swami said what does that mean he said swami it is a uh, uh, it is a name for krishna so it was very very proper good answer and then swami looked at me and uh, some i felt that i was reflecting a mischievous mood from swami and uh, swami looked at me and asked what is your name i said uh, swami my name is harish then swami said uh, hari ante emi and swami did not even say harish we very specifically said hari ante emi so then i thought this was really my uh, my reading was right and they said swami hari ante monkey then swami looked startled you know apparently and then he said uh, why are you saying like that endukar la cheptunao then i said swami you have only told and i started to swami his own chinna katha of <laughs> how narada once in one of those universes was attracted by a princess who would had said that she will get married to only somebody with a hari mukha so narada goes to narayana and prays to him that he blesses him with hari mukha so that he can go and uh, get married to this princess everybody laughing and he thinks that wow everybody is in such a joyous mood today and he goes in front of the princess being very sure that she he uh, that he will be the one she garlands but instead she gets scared of him and runs away and then apparently he looks at himself in the his reflection and realizes that his face is one of monkey and then he goes back to narayana the story continues but as i was telling i realized that i was not have my audience was not captive and i was over speaking at this point so i i became silent in the middle of the story then swami kind of started uh, telling so your parents have kept this name no you cannot uh, you cannot make joke of this name okay swami and i felt very bad that you know there were three more of us in the room and swami was in such a good mood he was asking these questions and because of my response other three did not get an opportunity to answer apologies again after that bhagwan came to uh, the bhajan hall and after sitting in the bhajan hall he continued the same conversation he started looking at some bhajan boys and started asking them what their name is and what the meaning of their name is a couple of students answered and then swami again turned towards me and asked me one more time what is your name i said swami harish and before i could even complete that immediately swami shouted in, 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 in swami's loud whisper as you could call it hari ante monkey whole bhajan hall started roaring in laughter unlike the other student who maintained equanimity my face lost all its color i was absolutely shocked i was awestruck just now when i cracked the same uh, joke the swami he looked so offended and now he is telling the same joke to everyone else but such is the infectious nature of bhagwan's humor that no matter how you feel you cannot but help but join in and i joined with everyone on the laughter and the day ended the, that way but many years later when i contemplated on uh, this particular incident i 
I remembered a very important statement which Bhagwan had made. This was in 2005, Kodai. So we were seated in Sai Shruti, uh, along with other students, and uh, suddenly someone from the kitchen came and called, said, "Swami is calling uh, you." And I got up and went and said, "The so Swami was in the pathway which comes from the kitchen to the hall where all the students were and uh, elders were seated." the swami was holding in his hands a tray full of watches now we all know the spiritual significance which swami always tells about watches holding that whole tray of watches swami gave the whole tray in my hand and then pointed his finger towards me and said you are mine you are mine some of you might have listened to some other talks of mine where i talk about and a different chiseling which was happening to me in kodai that year and why my response at that point was not exactly how you would have expected it to be but putting two and two together now i realized that so complete is bhagwan's ownership of us when we say that bhagwan is a possessive god we mean it in the sense that he owns us completely so much so that we do not even have the right to mock our own name even that right has been relegated to him only he has the right to even make fun of us when that understanding dawned there was also a wave of gratitude as and when we reflect on the various happenings of our life we slowly and surely start recognizing and being aware of the chiseling that has been taking taking place all through forget about these indirect messages even direct messages of bhagwan are not often perceived by us directly so accustomed do we become in his proximity that we confuse his humanness for humanity and we start correcting swami for his own words in 2005 after i had uh, completed my mba when swami gave this opportunity to walk beside him i was still uncomfortable because you know as the saying goes form is temporary so today swami is talking tomorrow he may not now how do we kind of stay get retained in prashant nilayam how to stay back in prashant nilayam it is good if i secure a job in the ashram if swami gives me some job in ashram then i can stay here irrespective of you know whether or not swami is talking to me or not we all make our own schemes our own plans about what we feel is the requisites for our actions so i started requesting swami swami please give me some uh, opportunity in uh, in darshan then immediately swami said you central trust lo auditor ka chestanu i'll make you an auditor in central trust evarena tappu cheste if anybody makes any mistake emi bayam lekunda swami daggara vachi cheppochu without any fear you can come and tell swami 
So Swami was bestowing the highest role, as you know, as the way he was describing it. And yet, such is our own opinion of ourselves. Despite constant evidences that Swami has provide, provided, that he does not call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Every instance of my life, every interaction with Bhagwan, every opportunity that I had got, were all for things that I was absolutely unqualified for. And yet, he has lifted me up and he has provided me each and every one of those opportunities. And yet again, when he was trying to do something like this, I responded to him saying, Swami, I have a finance background. I don't have BCom background. I did MBA, Swami. I did MBA marketing. Swami, where did you do the work? Swami, please give me a job somewhere else. Right? When Bhagavan himself is giving you an opportunity and that too, with, he's advertising with such beautiful words. Yet, you know, the, the, your own self of worth, your own uh, sense of self keeps you down. Many, many years later, in 2018, I decided that at that point I was in international trade, I was uh, traveling across countries, I was, uh, you know, distributing pro products. So I was getting tired of that. I said, no, I need to get into a different type of role. So I wanted to do another course. So, there was this opportunity in university in the US for me to do a master. So, I went there, did my master's. And during the master's, I had a, there was a networking event from Walmart, the company which my brother was talking about, where I have the opportunity to work with now, where uh, there was a requirement for a data analytics role. So I went and spoke to that person and it seemed fit and we went through the entire process and I got in. The interesting thing was, despite the fact that the role was one of data analytics, the department where this role was based was global audit. And as and when I started working there, I started realizing that I was less of an analyst and more of an auditor. So it may take us many years, but every word of Bhagwan will come true. And it has to come true. There was another occasion in Kodai in 2005, when uh, Swami gave his first interview to my parents. And then uh, you know, Swami was asking about... Uh, uh, about my parents' well-being and he was telling my parents about me. Oh, he's, uh, he's such and such, you know, the way uh, how only Swami can pep you up. And then uh, Swami said, he, this boy even sings very well. Then Swami looked at me and said, Tu padata ho gada? Then very diplomatically answered, Swami, I follow bhajans. Then Swami said, Kadu, no lead che ochu. You can lead Bhajans. I stayed silent. I knew the quality of the bhajan singers who were seated outside. And to even, you know, go and wag my tail there was not something which I was prepared to. But again, many years later, this particular role which I was talking about in Walmart is in a remote town called Bentonville. In a state called Arkansas which many people in the U.S. are not aware of, of its existence. I remember so much so that uh, during the orientation of uh, in Walmart, the people talking about Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, in some very familiar terms, they said that this place used to be a stone's throw away from Stone Age. And today there is an airport here. I was like, I have heard this dialogue somewhere else.
So in this particular place, again there was no Sai Center. Incidentally, we uh, there was an um, interest for music. There are uh, interest of group were singing devotional music together. And one such group, we invited them home, and we had Sai Bhajans and. Uh, there are a lot of experiences. Many of them started facing after being part of it. Like very often, we think that we are introducing Swami, but visiting cards have already come in. But the interesting thing which happened during that time was, even though many of them were accomplished singers, they did not know about the way to sing Sai Bhajans. So then, being the only male Sai devotee there who was aware of Sai Bhajans. I had the the unique responsibility to teach all these people how to sing Sai Bhajans. So I would lead the Bhajans for them to you know start learning about how to sing. And even that had to come true. So every word of Bhagwan definitely comes true. To help out Brother Parikshit on his conclusion. I thought I will probably conclude with some takeaways. Like any other talk, of course, I came here intending to talk something, and Swami, of course, took it in a totally different direction. But nevertheless, some of the basic themes that I felt that Bhagwan was trying to communicate. Through this imperfect instrument today, goes to number one: recognizing Bhagwan's reflection, reaction, and resound in us, and associating ourselves as frequently as we can. Such places of divine potency, where unknowingly to us, Bhagwan's divine reflection exists and operates on us and chisels us as an invisible happening. So let us make the effort to visit the places where Bhagwan has been, and to spend as much time as we can in all those divine abodes of Bhagwan. Secondly, I know I didn't cover this in detail. But let's not be too quick in judging the spiritual progress, or forget anybody else, but of ourselves. Very often we keep, we start feeling down, thinking that you know, Swami has given us so much. What are we doing today? Have we got caught in in this world? Have we forgotten him? Have we forgotten his lessons? Let us remember his words: that our life is in his hands. Swami has looked at each and every one of our eyes deeply and said that you are mine. Is it possible that our life can go astray? Is it possible that? Our life would go in a route which was not designated by Him. Is it possible that we are going through anything in our life if it was not meant for the happening of our own chiseling? We keep talking about chiseling. What is it that this chiseling is all about? 
భగవాన్ తెలుసిన చిన్న కథ ఆఫ్ అ మ్యాన్ హూ వెరీ బ్యూటిఫుల్లీ కార్వ్స్ ఎక్సలెంట్ ఐడల్స్ ఆఫ్ కృష్ణ ఇట్ ఇస్ సో మచ్ సో దట్ ఎనీ వన్ హూ ఇస్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ దోస్ ఐడల్స్ కెనాట్ బట్ ఫీల్ దట్ దే ఆర్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ హిమ్ సెల్ఫ్ so a person went to him and asked how is it that you chisel what is it that you do what is the process by which you make such immaculate idols then he said what are you talking about i have not once chiseled an idol of krishna krishna already exists in each and every one of those stones all that which i chisel out is that which is not krishna no matter what questions that we have no matter what is it that we are facing no matter what is that one thing which that we feel that we need to overcome bhagwan has given one response to all of that understand your identity i talked with you i started my talk talking about transformation i talked about how we always used to think that transformation meant bad to good but what i slowly started to under to started to realize or to be aware of in his presence i remember a story of uh, ramakrishna barmamsa where apparently swami vivekananda and uh, rakel were to take a boat and cross to come to dakshineshwar apparently the boatman would hurl abuses about ramakrishna and vivekananda gave back the boatman in in equal words and kind of asserted the dominance of his guru how can someone talk so low of my guru so apparently when vivekananda comes back in ramakrishna's presence ramakrishna says you should not have behaved like this you let your anger go astray you should control you should learn to be silent the next day the same incident happens with rakel and he stays silent and when he comes back comes to dakshineshwar ramakrishna paramahamsa asks him how come you are silent he is talking about his guru like this did you not feel the need to defend professor sainath sir talks about a very similar incident which happened in purnachandra with him and another student with very similar behavioral patterns every master comes down and every master teaches these lessons so what does this mean so should we be vocal should we be silent so that the person who was loud was asked to transform to be a person who was silent the person who was silent was asked to transform to be the person who was loud so what then is this transformation slowly we become aware that the transformation which bhagwan constantly talks about or sorry the transformation which bhagwan constantly brings about in all our lives is to help us understand the fluidity of what we think of our identity we allow our self to be defined by a few personality traits and say that this is harish this is me this is you and yet 
भगवान विल ब्रेक दट मोल्ड He will break our association with whatever we think is our identity. And once the awareness comes that what we identify as our identity is is fluid, is not something which is what we have to live with. Then we go back to the question of who am I? and it is the recognition of that identity which is that swami has very beautifully mentioned as the medicine for all that which ails us so praying to bhagwan to give us the strength to take the bitterness of this medicine and to be able to recover from whatever that ails us so that we start recognizing that our self is not different from him and that we our self need to be his reflection reaction and resound jai sai ram om shri sai ram i think uh, brother harish has made my job simple but uh, i'll try to rewind and kind of fast forward as well some of the uh, happenings and what he spoke about i think first of all let's give a big round of applause to brother uh, harish for coming all the way from bangalore braving the bangalore traffic and coming to mumbai um so brother harish started off by talking about how proximity is not equal to dearness how swami brought about transformation in his life from a person who had low self confidence to a person what we see him today um funny anecdotes of pancha pandavas and uh, how swami always made us feel exclusive uh, one quite glimpse which uh, only i think form boys and people who have uh, dealt with swami uh, would know and one tidbit which he gave us was how swami was never afraid there was no fear in swami we always talk about love but the fear aspect is completely missing is what brother harish beautifully brought out um we we talk about mental health lot on nowadays um, how to manage moods the pari prashna which uh, brother spoke about and the mental health guidance which swami gave uh, him at an early stage how form is temporary but class is permanent right so how we need to be humble despite whatever we are today and how every word of swami finally comes true despite maybe this generation or the next um with that um uh, we would like to offer our token of gratitude and love to brother harish would call on stage brother nitin acharya to felicitate uh, brother harish Brother Nitin, Sai Ram, everybody. I am very happy to, you know, see Harish here and talking. He talked about uh, the God qualifies the called. So, I think after having been in Swami's fold and doing his duty, and particularly the last phase. from 2005 onwards and when i was blessed to have harish also and even siddharth who is also amit sir now i think at that time in fact one of our trustees told that the way this swami you know that phase was there my duty got over in 2008 so in 3 years i was not in the close proximity so that time one of the trustee told you were actually fortunate actually not to see swami in that state during those particularly in 2010 to 11 and at that time when i connect the dots i felt that emotionally you know you have to be very strong your heart has to be strong to serve swami at that time harish was the one who actually he was there out of we panch pandavas he was the most qualified one and swami made him most qualified so he deserves that big applause yeah. 
and uh, we will offer some token of gratitude to him he came all the way today morning he came and again today is going back so we would like to see him again here sai ram thanks